It's happening in every neighborhood. Down every street. Sickness. Addiction. And violence has been turning countless homes into crime scenes. Suffering. Depressed. Alone. Suicidal. A very good evening to everyone. Welcome to your program, Problems and Solutions. Do you know that we have, from this Sunday now, we have 10 Sundays to end 2022? <laughs> it sounds unbelievable because the time passed very quick. The time flies. But this is exactly from this Sunday until the last Sunday of the year, if I'm not mistaken, is going to be the 25th. Um, we have 10 Sundays, 10 Sundays only to finish the year. So means that we are very close to the end of one more year. And my question is, you're going to accept to end this year as you are? You're going to accept to continue suffering as you are? Because your suffer, your problem is not your destiny, is not your karma, is not your cross. Perhaps people tell you that, perhaps you already said that to yourself, oh, this is my karma, this is my way. No, this problem is there for the name of God to be glorified because without problems, how God is going to manifest himself? If you have a Bible at home, you probably you read the Bible, you see the story of David and Goliath. So who made David? Who made David to become stronger and to become, you know, that king that everybody, you know, loved it and everybody saw the power of God in him. Goliath. We have the story of Gideon and the Midianites. The Midianites made Gideon. And the, 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 the enemies of the past is what make and make to appear the heroes of faith. What I'm trying to say to you is this problem that you are facing is not your end. This problem can be the beginning of a great miracle. And that's why here at the Universal Church, we are in these 10 Sundays, you know, fighting for the power of God to manifest in all the areas of your life, in your family, in your love life, in your financial life, in everything. Doesn't matter how your life is right now and doesn't matter how the world is surrounding you right now. Because the power of God is stronger than everything. I would like to invite you for you to stay with us and see what God is doing in people's lives. And straight after, I'll come back to you to continue talking about that. If you want our help also, as you can see below your screen, there is our contact number. The worst moment in my life, I remember, it was a day when I was in the house of my ex and we had a physical altercation. He grabbed me and he followed me for the, to the floor. And I remember that night I left the house, it was about 4 a.m. in the morning and I was walking around the street just thinking of how I can end my life. I felt so low, I was so heartbroken and I just thought the only way this pain will end is if I take my life away. I was daddy's princess, put it that way. Anything I wanted, I had it. I had no problems. We were financially well. This was back home as well in Africa. We had everything. Um, but when I turned six years old, my dad passed away. And when he passed away, that was the beginning of a very bad life. Because I remember at that point, I was no longer living at home. I was sent off to boarding schools, aunties' houses. With living at auntie's houses as well, I experienced abuse with family members. And I just never had a stable home growing up. Me and my mom's relationship broke down as well. She started verbally abusing me. She would call me names. You know, she'd always tell me how ugly I was, that, you know, I would never have a husband, no one would ever want me. So I grew up with a low self-esteem. I didn't like myself. I thought I was very ugly and I just never thought I'd have a happy life. I just thought my life was going to be worthless. I believed her words and I just thought to myself, like, I'll never be anything. I was sad. I was, I was just down. I would cry myself to sleep. And I just felt like no one loved me in the world. I was, I was all alone. I was, I had nothing. I had no one. I had a friend that invited me to the church, to the youth group actually, when I was 17. I came, 
Then I stayed for a while. I didn't really take things seriously. And then I left. When I left, that's when everything really went downhill. I started drinking like nothing. I would drink every weekend. I was out partying every single weekend. I dressed so provocatively. It was all about seeking attention from guys, seeking that approval from men. I had so many body piercings. I had tattoos. I became a different person. I remember I recall one night when I came home, I was so drunk. My colleagues brought me home and I remember my mom saying to me, Tanaka, I don't even recognize you. And hearing those words from my mom, that's when I really knew that I'd really gone in deep and I'd really, I wasn't the same anymore. I just tried to do everything to fit in. At the time, that's when I met this guy and I thought he was the answer to my prayers. I thought he was everything that I was looking for. And I remember things were quite rocky at the beginning, but when things settled, I really felt like, oh my gosh, this is it. I'm going to get married. And we even got engaged. We moved together. Within a short space of time, actually, his true colors started coming out. He started obviously bringing women to the house when I wasn't there. He started cheating on me and he just became a really crazy relationship. The person that I thought was going to change, be the answer to my prayers, was actually the one that caused me to feel very suicidal. And I remember there was a night that we're in the house, we were fighting, he grabbed me, he pushed me to the floor, we were grabbing each other, throwing each other against the walls, and it was really, really bad. And I, I left the house four o'clock in the morning and I thought to myself, I've gone to the bottom of the bottom and there's no way that this pain is going to end unless if I end my life. And I didn't see myself going back home that day. I just sort of felt like the lowest of the low. I felt the rejection from my mum, rejection from you know the, the relationships that I had in the past before him and even from the man that I thought he's going to look after me he's going to take care of me like he's the answer to my prayers he's the one that led me to the point of feeling so suicidal I really felt like I really am alone I have nothing I have no one at that time that's when I started thinking of that voice of I need to go back because I knew about the experience I had in the church and you know the peace that I had when I was in the church the first time and it just all started coming back to me and I was like Tanaka you need to go back but I just never had the strength to eventually I found the strength and I found myself back in the church and I uh, that's when I really started to do things properly. I was never happy without a man in my life. I always felt like my happiness is going to come from a guy. But when I started hearing about the Holy Spirit, I heard that he's the one that completes you. He's the one that heals the pain of the past. And the thing I used to do is I used to, if I get hurt with one guy, I'll jump into a next relationship to heal myself, put all the burden on him to make me happy. But I heard that the Holy Spirit is the one that does that and he doesn't require me to lose myself or I don't need to do crazy things, painful stuff to have him. And this is what I said, I need to have the Holy Spirit. I need to have God's presence. And without him, there is no way that I could have healed from what I went through. I was determined to receive the Holy Spirit. At first, because of what I had been through, I thought I don't deserve him. I've made so many mistakes. I've sinned so much. There's no way that the Holy Spirit will come inside of me. But when I learned that actually I've let go of my past, I've stopped sinning, I've stopped sleeping around, I've stopped drinking. And I remember telling God like, God, I can't change without you. I can't let go of my past. I can't heal without you. You are the only one that can help me. So I really need you. And I remember one day I was in my room. I just got the desire to just start seeing the Holy Spirit. I was just telling God how I was feeling. I was just telling God how much I need him, everything, all the intimate parts inside of me that I'd kept for many years, things I've never told anyone. I was just talking to God, just telling him. And then I just started worshiping God. And then all of a sudden I had this joy that came upon me, a joy that I had never, ever felt never felt before, a joy that men could not give me, a joy that alcohol never gave me, a joy that nothing I tried in the world ever gave me. From that moment, I realized that my reaction to certain things was so different. I realized that the pain that I had from my ex hurting me, it wasn't there anymore like it was. With that, I said to myself, okay, God, look, if this is really you, then show me, confirm that this is you. And I went to the night vigil in that faith fasting and I said, God, you need to confirm that this is you. And that day, that was the day that God confirmed that he was inside of me. And since then, I have never been the same, never, ever been the the same. I don't need the attention of men. I don't crave men like that anymore. I don't feel the need to drink alcohol or to wear provocative clothing to chase men's attention. I'm not lonely anymore. I don't self-harm anymore like I used to. There's a big difference in my relationship with my mom today, even with my siblings as well. We are a lot closer today than we were before. With the people that abused me in the past, I managed to forgive them as well. I used to really feel pain when I see the person. I just had this anger inside of me. I even, to a verge where I wanted to kill him. But when I look at him today, I, I don't have those feelings anymore. I don't feel bad towards him. If anything, I pray for him now. I actually say, God, help him. It doesn't matter how busy you get. This is what's most important. And I always remember um, the verse that says, heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of God doesn't. 
and that is the most important thing and it's the word of God that I invest more in keeps me going that keeps me strong in moments when I feel weak or in moments when I feel down or when a problem is getting to me it's the word of God that I turn to and since I received the Holy Spirit and since I've been like with God and building my relationship with God nothing makes me more happier than helping others and today as well like I meet young girls that were in the same situation as I was and it makes me so happy to be able to sit with them letting them know that there's a way out not even just young girls anyone always I'm ready ready to save souls ready to help people my dear friend, these testimonies, let me tell you very, very, very close to you. These testimonies, these miracles are not something of the past. These people were not lucky because if you, if you saw attentive their story, their lives were disgraceful. The lives of these people were disgraceful. So they didn't have luck at all, but they have one thing that calls faith. And that faith, that faith, that they receive when they arrive here because here at the universal church we teach about the faith we use i'm going to take here the bible we use here the word of god the word of god and the word of god is the only weapon for us to overcome our problems if you have a bible doesn't matter if it's like this or smaller than this this is the weapon for you to overcome your problem because here is when you receive faith that's why I'm going to invite you for this Sunday now. From this Sunday now until the last Sunday of the year, we have 10 Sundays. You're going to bring this word to the universal church. If this word is true, if this is word is true, and this is a challenge, either if you accept it or not, it's up to you. I'm challenging you. Doesn't matter who you are, your race, your background, and the size of your problem. I'm challenging you, and this challenge is for all. If this word is true, if this word is true, in 10 in weeks, you're going to see something supernatural to happen in your life. Do you accept the challenge? You cannot say, sitting there on your sofa, or watch me, wherever you are watching me, you cannot say, ah, this is not true. <laughs> it's easy to say this is not true without trying. It's the same thing. You look to a plate of food. I don't like it. But you cannot, you cannot know if you like it. You just know if you like it or not when you try. So you can only see and know if the power of God is true or not when you test, when you use your faith. So you don't have nothing to lose. Sunday, I'll be waiting for you. Here in Sweden, we have two locations where we're going to be using the word of faith to pass to people and surely people's lives will be transformed. In our headquarters, we are here at 11 o'clock in the morning. Also, we have a service in the evening for those who work at 6 p.m., but the main service, 11 o'clock in the morning. We are at the Birgiosgotten 106, very close to the Tunobana Techniska. Also, Odenplan, we are nearby to Odenplan. We'll be here Sunday, 11 o'clock in the morning. If you are closer to Jotaburg, we are there at the same time, Sunday, 11 o'clock in the morning. Also, we have another service at 4 p.m., but our main service is 11 o'clock in the morning at the Ringengarten 13, Ringengarten 13 in Fort 7. We are near to Bacaplan. When you come out of the in Fort 7, on, the, on your right, you see the in Fort 7, you come out. On the left side, you're going to see the Universal Church. We'll be there waiting for you uh, Sunday, 11 o'clock in the morning. For more information, you can visit our website, www ucKg.se and if perhaps you are watching me in your in the social media and you are watching us in another country in another city you can visit our website and know the information about the church the universal church near to you have a blessed weekend I'll be waiting for you here on Sunday may God bless you I'm not leaving this hospital until I know what's wrong with my daughter you want out? That's fine with me! As I lay me down, heaven hear me now. I'm lost without a After giving it my all, winter storm has come and darkened my sun. 
after all that I've been through, who on earth can I turn to? I look to you. This program is brought to you by UCKG.